So I'm here in Hamburg. Lots of interesting speakers here in the Dutch uh, the blockchain uh, day. And I'm here with Frederik Ernst and she's from Gnosis. Yeah, Gnosis. They did an ICO. And what business are you, is your platform in? We provide um, a platform for people who want to make prediction markets. So if I want to know the wisdom of the crowd with uh, a lot of uh, money in uh, money in the skin in the game, then basically I can ask your platform questions and you have a system which answers it. How does it work? Exactly. So basically the way it works is uh, it, it follows the principle put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. So basically um, you don't ask people what they think is going to happen. You ask them what they expect is going to happen and uh, they actually have to uh, under... Uh, d uh, they actually have to put money up. Yeah. Uh, they have to basically buy the solution and they can sell the solution and you can basically see exactly. what makes the most money. And if, if, the, if they move the prediction in the right direction, they make money. If they move the, uh, the prediction in the wrong direction, they lose money. Yeah. So this is a very known field. Uh, I mean, lots of people are having theories around it. You were the first uh, to put a system like that on Ethereum and you raised tokens. How much money did you raise? We raised uh, 12.5 million dollars at the time. Okay, and, and the team consists of uh, what kind of people? Uh, we're just over 20 now. Yeah, and uh, where are you from? Where was it? Uh, where was it ori originally founded? I mean, I'm sure the members are all over the place, but where was it uh, founded? Um, so we're a Gibraltar-based company with uh, with employees all over the world. Um, we are actually a, s uh, a spin out of Consensus. Um, uh, who are based in Switzerland and New York, um, uh, who still own half of our company and uh, the rest belongs to us founders. Okay. So this is really, it, how is it to go through an ICO process? Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is crazy. Yeah, so tell us, uh, walk us through the timeline. When did you start, when did the team start in coming together? You wrote a white paper and uh, how long did it take to raise the money? So tell us a little bit about it. Oh, so the project is actually rather old. It's uh, two and a half years old now and uh, people who are working on it have worked on prediction markets before. Yeah. Uh, so they're not newbies. Um, they, we actually, it, the ICO was a year in the making. Uh, from a legal standpoint, we did all the due diligence that we possibly could. Um, we made sure that we uh, did this as uh, as securely as possible. Yeah. We had all our smart contracts audited multiple times, um, and uh, then it all came together in April. Yeah. But you didn't have a product, right? It was a white paper. Um, we do actually have a functioning uh, prediction market, uh, so we actually have the entire backend. Um, it's in beta. You can actually exit, access it on the internet. It works. Yeah. Um, the user interface isn't what we'd want it to be right now, uh, but we definitely have a product. Yeah. When you did the ICO, you had a working product? Yes. And was it working on the blockchain and on the Ethereum blockchain because it's really expensive to work on the Ethereum blockchain? It's working on the Ethereum blockchain and you are right, every transaction is expensive, but it's working as a proof of principle. You can use it on the blockchain. Okay. So now, uh, why do you think you raise so much money so quickly? Uh, is that because of the ICO you know, enthusiasm which is out there in the market or is it because of the prediction market concept? Um, so, uh, undoubtedly we're in a bubble. Uh, so, and there is, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if there were a correction at some point, a price correction for many of the um, ICOs that yeah. have been conducted. But for us, I can say we're a solid team and we're probably, uh, we're probably overvalued, but we are a solid team and I think we can execute. You're going to really do something with it. Yes, I think we can execute on this and I'm excited about that. Okay. But you have a nice idea. We're going to all uh, pay uh, where our mouth is. Uh, but Ethereum is too expensive. Are you going to wait until all these problems with scaling and then uh, expensive transactions are solved? Or are you going to go to a different blockchain or make your own? Or how, do you, how is that going to work? No, we're actually working on uh, ways to, s to make the Ethereum blockchain scalable. Yeah. Uh, there are several approaches as to this and we're, uh, we're, wor we're actively working on those. Uh -huh. So you're basically going to stick with Ethereum and you're going to make and you're going to help make the platform more successful before you can really do your own thing. It, absolutely. So I, I, I think we have to say we collected all our funds in Ether. So we're definitely long on Ether yeah. and uh, we, we're rooting for Ether to win. And we're actually doing our part to make that happen. Okay. When was your ICO? Uh, it was in April. Oh, my God. So the Ether was worth maybe 20 or something, 30? Uh, $30. And now it's worth 300. So you're you're the whole you you raised 12 and a half million original or on on current EFA prices. Original. Oh my God! So you're now having hundreds of millions of uh, euros. 
Well, a little bit less than 100 million, but yes, yes, we have a lot of money at the moment. Okay. When can we expect a scalable Ethereum uh, platform, which is basically usable? I hope uh, last quarter of next year. Okay. Do you think that um, the move, which is very exciting, because Ethereum is going from proof of my, uh, the mining uh, principle, proof of uh, work, to proof of stake, is that going to work? Yes. I expect it will work. Yeah. There will be a big fork, of course, because the miners won't be happy, so there will be two different evers. But will the majority of the value go with the, the ones who go for proof of, uh, proof of stake? I think so, because that's the, uh, that's the only scalable solution. So for everything else, it just becomes prohibitively expensive at some point. Yeah. Um, and sure, the miners, they are an interest group. I, I, I completely understand and I sympathize for them. But I think it's probably time to look for a new business model. Yeah. This whole idea of uh, proof of work, is that an, uh, was that a flaw in the blockchain uh, design process? Um, I think it worked really nicely early on. Um, so uh, when Bitcoin first started uh, and a couple of people actually took part in this, this was a really good idea. It was a really good way of finding, uh, you know, who, who was allowed to mine the next block. That yeah. it, it was great. It's just it just doesn't scale to millions of uh, users. So you think this the same thing needs to happen with uh, with the blockchain, uh, the Bitcoin, the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain? Um, I would expect that it happens. I'm not sure whether it will happen for the Bitcoin. They don't have a discussion on it yet, and they and and the miners own, of course, the the, the miners own, of course, uh, the, they have the right to veto everything. And also, uh, d I'm not entirely sure how um, switching from proof of work to proof of stake would actually happen on on Bitcoin because it's it's hard coded in the protocol and it's difficult to change when so many miners are against. Okay. Good luck. Well, it's going to be very interesting. She thinks, Frederick thinks, we're going to approve for stake. And then uh, the whole electricity, you know, the crazy non-green thing about uh, cryptocurrencies is going to change. And she can basically make her platform work. So next year, we'll come back and see if you actually have a product working. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you.